Yes, uh, thank you, Cornelius, and uh, and thank you for uh, offering me this uh, this prime spot in the program just after the Zupen coma and just before the afternoon nap. So, uh, but uh, I guess it says it all that you trust me to uh, to keep this awake and a bit lively. Let me. Um, let me first reflect on some of the things that I've heard this morning, and there's at least one that uh, I think we realize ourselves too little what the drama is, what we're talking about. When I hear these talks about uh, one and a half degrees Celsius or the two or the three degrees Celsius, people forget that we're talking about a global average. And let me explain to you what the relevance or the irrelevance of averages is. I remind this about the picture of having one hand in the freezer and the other hand in the oven. The average temperature is okay, but you got two hands damaged. And if you relate that to the two degrees global warming, we have to realize that certain parts on the earth above the ocean will not be impacted that heavily because of the cooling effect of the water. Whilst other parts, think of Southern Europe, will be more heavily impacted. So if you look at the two degrees average, you can think of five to six degrees standard deviation in, for instance, Southern Europe. And that makes aware much more the drama and the importance of what we are talking about. So that just as a, wouldn't call it a wake up call, but just in the, uh, in between the soup and coma and the afternoon nap, uh, we really need to focus our mind because there's a lot of importance of what we are doing and what we're talking about. Let me um, zoom into NEOM. And I was asked to, uh, to talk about hydrogen, but also to give a bit of information on the broader context of NEOM, uh, where we are and what we are doing. And uh, for those you've heard it this morning, NEOM is an area in Saudi Arabia as big as Belgium. So 30 minutes to talk about the past, the present, and the future of Belgium already describes the impossibility of that task. But nevertheless, let me, uh, let me give it a try. And uh, let me start with, uh, with the vision. And this is a lot of words, land of the future where the greatest minds and best talent are empowered to embody pioneering ideas and exceed boundaries in a world inspired by imagination. Oh, but if you zoom into the words, there are a few things in there that strike you immediately. Land of the future. It's not about today. It's even not about tomorrow because tomorrow is today in one day. The future is something that's always going to be there and that continues needs to be conquered for. And the only way you can do that is not by what today is innovation, because what we consider today is innovation, tomorrow we consider that as history. The only thing that resides is the people, minds, talents that you need to continuously improve, continuously innovate, continuously develop, to continuously create that future that we are looking for. It's about a pioneering ideas exceeding boundaries and it is that's the last uh, sentence in there imagination not by coincidence we call neon the land of the dreamers and the doers and both are needed because if a dream stays a dream it doesn't create any future but if the doers only continue to do the same thing again and again that might become very efficient in due time but not very effective so dreamers and doers is what it's about and if you can dream it you can do it. That's what we say in NEOM. So with less words, but just bringing it together, our purpose is to be an accelerator of human progress. And that resonates very well, because that is what, before we were born, already in the belly of the mother, it's what you want to do. It's in your gene set. Make progress. Grow, learn, and discover things. And doing that even faster, given the huge problems that we have around us, that's what we want to achieve at NEOM. Accelerator of human progress. And that more concrete is to be an economic engine for the region and the world, a powerful approach to environmental conservation, I'll come back to that, a living laboratory charting the courts for a new future. You cannot think and design the future. A living laboratory is about experimenting, discovering things, coming up with new ideas and being a home for an international community of dreamers and doers. Again, the dreamers and the doers, but also international, because the statement that innovation doesn't have a passport is true. And only the diversity of an international community can give you the inspiration and the ideas that you need 
to develop what we want to develop. So all in all, it's a place with exceptional livability and breathtaking diverse terrain because yes, great minds don't live in their heads only. They also want the physical environment that is inspiring, that is diversive, that you can go out and do sports or do leisure of all of that. Now that might be good talking from a neum perspective, but the question is, yeah, <laughs> all good. You know, neum needs the world, but why does the world need neum? Well, the short answer is to give the world a viable opportunity for a sustainable future, because some of the challenges that we have in neum, desert, climate, need for energy which is not there, food. How do we produce it? Where do we produce it? All of those challenges that we face when building NEOM are challenges that the world faces as well. And we think if we can bring together the greatest minds to crack the nut on some or maybe all of those challenges, we can help the world to crack the nut on those challenges. And it can be copy and pasted and exported to other parts in the world. So to be concrete, it's a global opportunity to redefine livability, redefine businesses, and redefine conservation. And let me zoom into these three pillars, as we call them uh, individually. So redefine livability. Imagine 2030. Neom residents will enjoy exceptional livability because we have a safe and a vibrant environment in which we can live and work. International community talked about that, the diversity that we need active lifestyle, there is 95% of NEOM that will not be developed for city or industrial purposes. So the lifestyle is very much interactive with nature. It gives you not only beautiful beaches and the possibility to swim and scuba dive, but also go into the mountains, do trekking, do exercising, etc., or to just do it in a leisureless form, which uh, is interesting as well. The landscape is something that uh, we are proud of in Neom. It's uh, very diverse and uh, people that can uh, have a family that either want to go to the mountains, that's an hour drive, or go to the beach, which is 20 minutes, or do any kind of other things. That's all there available within a uh, short distance. And uh, we'll come back to sustainability and conservation, but one of the elements is the interaction with nature that we are proud of in Neom and we will develop. But none of those uh, very... Uh, imaginal purposes can be reached if we don't create, uh, if we don't attract, if we don't develop business. Because at the end of the day, developing a land within a land, developing the land of the future also means you need to create jobs and you need to generate GDP. So business is important. And uh, within Neom, we have the ability to offer to business a clean slate with a own legislation, a own juridical framework that will be state of the art internationally, that will be independent from the Saudi legal framework. So it's not just a free economic zone, it's a complete land with all its necessities around that. R&D, because greatest minds and talents, R&D, university will be uh, very important. And uh, all of that powered by what we call one of the main enablers is low cost abundant renewable electricity. So that also attracts businesses and we'll talk later about green hydrogen as the first one, which is basically a business that we attracted. Now there was some strategic thinking behind it and it all fits with the vision and the purposes of NEOM, but at the end of the day, it's what we have on offer. Home to greatest minds we talked about, but those greatest minds want to travel as well and we want to have also interaction with other great minds in the world and the location of NEOM is a big business advantage as well. It is uh, within four hours flight of 40% of the global population. People underestimate, but forget that flying from Neom to Rome is a two and a half to three hours flight. From Neom to London is four and a half hours. It's not that far away. And that links to climate as well, uh, which is uh, good for business, but also good for people to, uh, to live there. And last but not least, the third pillar, which is about redefining conservation. And conservation to our view is not only of putting a fence around the nature and don't let anybody in. It's about an interactive relationship, a partnership between people and nature that benefits to both. So reconservation is uh, one of the first climate positive societies that we want to develop there. 
different way of looking at driving. It uh, not only relates to nature, it also relates to the way we build cities. I'll come back to that at the end. The renewable energy that we use and uh, basically the uh, whole respect for uh, what nature is and what it can uh, offer to us. So uh, it's an opportunity like nowhere else. Uh, powered by the world's brightest minds, Greenfield project on a scale never seen before. One might consider Belgium to be a small country, but nevertheless, it is a full-fledged country. And uh, uh, to build that from scratch and uh, to build it in that size is uh, a scale that has never been done before. Various sectors that uh, will uh, assemble uh, there and that in an environment of rich natural uh, resources. Business is important, we'll support them coming, but we will offer not only the business, but also the people working there, a world-class quality of life, global-minded community. I talked about the own legal framework and uh, at the crossroads uh, of the world. So that is uh, what we have on offer. And the uh, question which now becomes more and more important is how we will bring that to life. What is the way forward? And there's basically seven points in that relationship. The first one is it's a prime location. I talked about that. It's in the northwest of uh, Saudi Arabia. It's uh, little dots here on, uh, on the chart. And uh, it is uh, a land or a piece of land with a history, road to Medina, for some who uh, want to search the internet or are aware of that. It's just bordering to Jordania. It's across the Gulf of Aqaba to uh, the Sinai Island, where there's a lot of history. Egypt is just across the Red Sea, and uh, Israel is a bit further up north. So it's a very international location. It is well located. And uh, talking about weather, temperature is 10 degrees cooler than in the rest of the Middle East. So uh, despite the very nice weather we have here nowadays, for those who join Dubai in summer, it's at least for somebody who has more Eskimo genes like I have, uh, not the most comfortable environment. That is what we have, and uh, the wind and the sun is what we talked about. Secondly, we start to build it from the ground up. So we are unrestricted, clean slate, fresh solutions we can bring in place, and these can be oriented to the future. Let me give you one example. Drone taxis or drone usage, very often difficult because it needs to compete with uh, 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 FAA uh, legislation for aviation, which already is in place, and that doesn't leave any place for, for drone. Now, we can set up that aviation regulation from the ground up and get a good place for both of those activities, which allows drone taxi companies to come to NEOM, do their first experiments before they go and try to taxi in Los Angeles, where there are a lot of restrictions uh, to what they do there. It's a diversified economy talked about many sectors. So this is not only about energy, it's about uh, water, but it's about manufacturing. But beyond that, it's about mobility, financial services, media, entertainment, tourism, design and construction, technology and digital, just to name a few. So it's a very diverse economy. And those are the sectors and my colleagues that work on each of those areas to uh, bring them forward. Laws and regulations, when it's a clean sleep approach, you can build that from the beginning. And it's in harmony with nature. Knowledge is power. We want to understand that interaction. We want to protect nature, do no harm, but we also want to enhance it. Restore, repair, rewild, those are key components of what we do in living in harmony with nature. And sustaining that, sustainable resources to inspire and to reimagine the way we live in harmony with our environment. And that is important because we've talked about some of the global challenges, the way we produce energy, the way we produce food. A lot of the activities that we do, do go to the detriment of our environment, and there is an end to that. So we need to reinvent that in doing it in a more proper way in order to uh, create this a truly good partnership between humans and nature. And then last but not least, it's an international project with Saudi Arabia support. Not in, unimportant because Saudi Arabia has been a reliable supplier of energy to the world economy and has made the prosperous development of a lot of countries possible. They are aware of their responsibility and if the world needs a different form of energy, and to continue being that reliable supplier of energy to the world means that also Saudi Arabia has to change. And they can do that. 
because uh, it has uh, one of the strongest balance sheets in the world. And we know that each of those developments in the beginning need a lot of investment from the incumbent, from the inheritor. And then later on, it will attract uh, foreign investment from before. But uh, the uh, initial investments need to be done by, uh, by Saudi, and they are uh, very well aware of that. Last but not least, talking again about people. Greatest minds, that is what it's uh, about. We have already at the moment, well, still counting while I speak, we are at close to 1,500 people employed by Neom Company. More than 50 nationalities, 35 years of average age. Because if you want to invent the future, don't ask the past. Ask the young generation that have to live in that future. Let them, people support what they create, develop their own future. So it's a young population at Neom, but that's good. That's what we're proud of. And it also reflects the average age of what we see in, uh, in Saudi. 50 plus nationalities, but we do have a responsibility also towards Saudi. So 40% of uh, our Neomians are uh, from, uh, from Saudi or have a Saudi passport. And most of them already live on site. So we'll come later to, is Neom happening? Yes. It's more than a colorful PowerPoint presentation or a YouTube film. We are bringing the greatest minds to Neom, and that is where it happens. And let me... Uh... The brightest minds, the boldest plans, a blueprint for future living. We are making Neom. In Neom sectors, we are redefining life as we know it. With unrivaled natural resources, Neom will be the world's most advanced renewable energy hub and the first at scale fully renewable energy system. Integrating advanced manufacturing methods of Industry 4.0 and the circular economy will create sustainable factories of the future for products of the future. Familiar only to your imagination, Neom will become a global tourism destination built on world leading design and sustainability principles and cutting edge technology. Through our commitment to zero liquid discharge and desalinization with brine processing using 100% renewable energy, we'll eradicate waste, prevent pollution, and ensure water flows forever. And to become a global showcase for capital project execution with never seen before examples of performance and efficiency. This is literally see the unseen. Land built 100% renewable energy. We're actually talking about enhancing the environment and bringing water back to the surface. What NEOM represents, the future innovation and solutions. Almost science fiction brought to life. We'll set a benchmark for well-being by addressing the world's greatest health challenges through the use of innovative design and technologies. Uniting communities, promoting health and accelerating excellence will have the world's most physically active population and host the world's foremost talent and events, creating a society where value creation is the currency of exchange. Neom will be the world's first fully cashless society, a hub for next generation entertainment and culture that redefines convention and attracts the world's most creative people through unique, enriching and immersive experiences empowering innovation through a living lab environment and lifelong personal development will create an education system for the future. The world's first fully integrated media hub will ensure an unparalleled environment for content creation by incentivizing early deployment of robotics and artificial intelligence, humans and machines will come together in harmony. Seamless connectivity will ensure smart transport and trade routes to the world and we will harness innovation to nourish people and the planet, guaranteeing food security for generations to come. Neom is making history because it will be the first truly sustainable city on this planet. It's about improving livability. Neom. It's uh, good and it makes me proud to see uh, my colleagues on video. Uh, we truly have brought together a great team. I'm talking for uh, my colleague sector heads in the various sectors, but also for the energy team, because uh, Neom is happening. We're open for business. And it uh, took us quite a long time to get where we are right now. And uh, I hope from the first part of my presentation, you can imagine that uh, 
this is a project which none has ever been done on the earth, maybe except for building the pyramids in Egypt. But then they took 3,000 years to build those pyramids, and we only have 3,000 days to build Neon. So that's the challenge that is, uh, is ahead of us. And open for business means next week we are going to have the launching event of our industrial city. First tenants already coming uh, and building their operations on site, and uh, we're happy and welcome to add others that want to come to Neon. Open for business also means, and it is happening means, we uh, have next to the almost 1,500 Neon people uh, that we have on board, and we are growing. I mean, the next 12 months, we intend to double that number. So we're also open for hiring. But uh, next to that, the uh, groundworks and the construction work that is ongoing uh, represents in some 30,000 uh, construction workers on site already at this moment in time. And with the plans we have ahead of us, by 2025, we will have between 400 and 450,000 construction workers in Neon. Talking about a challenge, who has ever done project management of a size which is somewhere close to that, knows what uh, that means. Now, zooming back into energy and, uh, and my activities, we have uh, established the uh, energy and water company. It was registered in uh, the commercial uh, registers uh, in Tabuk on July the 4th. Just as a small side joke, uh, because we are carving out the energy sector from Neum and giving it an own company. July 4th is known to be uh, the Independence Day. I'm not sure whether there's any connection to setting up uh, the energy and water company. But yes, we are on our own. Uh, our uh, shareholder is, uh, is Neum Inc. So we still belong to the family. But we have an own board. And I've been asked to uh, pick up the role as CEO of that energy and water company. And uh, our uh, board is chaired by uh, uh, Minister uh, Al Fatli uh, from Environment, Water and Agriculture. But he's one of the driving business, business ministers within the uh, Saudi uh, cabinet. And we also have on board the chief technical officer of Aramco. And I know Aramco is not related immediately to renewable technology, but he does all the non-conventional stuff at Aramco. Very knowledgeable. And also the second guy within the Ministry of uh, Energy. We couldn't get the minister himself, because he's of royal family and uh, he has a lot of other obligations, but his second man is also in our board. We uh, are building the energy and water company on the remit of the 100% renewable supply to Neon. And uh, just to have an imagination of what that means, by 2030, we expect to deliver some 30 terawatt hours of electricity, which means some 18 gigawatt of installed capacity uh, in order to supply Neon. Now, that is one of the scenarios, and that's the base case scenario. And, you know, if it goes slower, we might end up with only 20 terawatt hours. But if I look at the ambitions of my colleagues, we could add up with something like 60 terawatt hours and double the installed capacity by then. So that gives a bit of the flavor of the dynamic that is required uh, from Neon going forward. As an uh, energy and water company, we are already the proud owner or investor in one of the first moonshot projects that we are setting off the ground in Neom. And I'm talking about the uh, first large renewable hydrogen project. So now we come to business. Uh, next page, please. Uh, I will start to talk about that because I want to uh, finish off with two concrete projects that we are uh, developing in, uh, in reality. The first one is the world's largest renewable hydrogen project. It's already talked about a few times. Uh, it is a uh, joint venture with three partners in there. Uh, Aquapower, one of the founding members, uh, or one of the strategic partners of uh, DII, together with... Uh, with uh, Neon and uh, Air Products, three partners that bring together very complementary and distinct capabilities. Neom as the visionaire, as the one that uh, developed the strategy for that, the one that has the resources, the wind, the solar, the land, and the location. Aquapower as the pioneer in large scale, utility scale, low cost, uh, renewable electricity, 
and they have products as an operator in uh, operations, in gas, in uh, industrial supplies. So those three of uh, them are uh, truly bringing together that first uh, investment. It promotes a circular economy, reduces CO2 emissions, and it produces 650 tons of green hydrogen per day, a quarter of a million of tons of hydrogen per year. And that's just the first investment, and that's the scale we immediately step up to. And uh, that is very important, uh, not only for the world, but also for Saudi Arabia and also for NEOM to create a dynamic new industry, because that is what we are embarking upon, a new industry that is under development and that we are actually doing. Coming back to a lot of the uh, uh, press announcements and indications around the world that are being done, we are not only the dreamers, we are also the doers. And the uh, project uh, was announced uh, quite some time ago already between uh, a uh, agreement that was signed and it concerns a total investment of uh, $5 billion uh, into the production facil facility, including the renewable energy elements. And in addition, Air Products, who is the off-taker of all the uh, green ammonia that we make on-site out of the green hydrogen, uh, is investing another billion dollars in uh, infrastructure uh, to uh, convert the uh, ammonia back to hydrogen and to uh, fuel or uh, transport or do logistics uh, on that. So uh, international partners, and it's a good example that NEOM is not only done with government money. We offer the conditions for investors to come to NEOM to help us to build NEOM. Not only because we need their money, much more because we need their expertise, we need their ideas, we need their commitment, we need all that they can bring to the party that NEOM doesn't have on its own or uh, standalone. Uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, $5 billion investment, uh, this relates to roughly 4 gigawatt of renewable power, mainly solar and wind. I'm not going to tell you the exact mix. That's a bit of a commercial modeling secret, but in total it adds up to 4 gigawatts. And I can say that in NEOM, we have the unique advantage of, well, first of all, having sun during the day. That's not very unique, I must admit, but the unique advantage we have is the wind pattern. The wind in NEOM is not weather-related. It is a thermal event. It relates to the difference in temperature between day and night and the cold water of the uh, Red Sea, and it uh, gives wind mainly in the evening and in the night. And that is unique because it is very complementary to the solar that we have during the day and gives us the ability to get to a efficiency rate which is higher than what you would get when you do only wind or only solar. So four gigawatts of renewable power, a uh, bit of batteries, but not a lot because batteries are still uh, too expensive, but we can store the uh, hydrogen before we get it into the ammonia production. And uh, the volume of production is, uh, as I said, 650 tons per day, 1.2 million tons of ammonia per year. Now coming to electrolyzer, electrolyzer capacity, it's uh, not anymore a secret. It was uh, uh, already informed in the press announcement. We are investing in alkaline electrolyzer technology from Thyssen Group uh, because this is about doing. This is not about developing or dreaming of the future. We need to get assets on the ground. We need to get hydrogen out of the pipeline. We need to get ammonia on the ships. And then you look at what is there. And that is how our choice was made and how we came uh, to that. The fully on stream. Um, for those who uh, go to NEOM, they can see that the destined site is already under land preparation. And that's a good announcement because uh, we expect to do the groundbreaking uh, after uh, the close of the year this year, so somewhere in the next, uh, in the first half of next year. That's how concrete the project is. And last but not least, and I've stipulated that a few times, but it's very important, it is a commercial project. It's not a subsidized adventure. I think that is important to the recipient, and specifically in Europe, where there's a lot of debate about, you know, does it make sense to produce it in faraway countries and then transport it? Well, the conditions under which we can produce it in NEOM are incomparable to how you can produce it in Europe. So the only projects I'm aware of in Europe that are concrete are in the tens, you know, maybe 100 or max 200 megawatt size, and it still needs government money. Here we are building 2,000 megawatt of electrolyzer capacity without any subsidy. So that is the first project that is as concrete as it gets. NEOM goes ahead and there's a second one which I would like to close off with, which is the line. NEOM draws the line. 
But I think that says a lot because that reflects in all that we are doing, but it also reflects in the way we approach urbanization. Today's cities are not built for human beings. They're built for cars. We don't want cars to live in our cities. We want people to live in our cities. So the way we approach our concept of urbanization is a city free of cars and streets. Residents will have nature and all daily needs within a five minute walk. Want to create the jobs within the city after we've moved the industry out of the cities at the break of the 19th century. And we're now standing in a traffic jam every morning to get to the office side or the industrial side where we work and then stand in the same traffic jam on the other side of the motor lane in the evening. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And if you look at clean manufacturing activities, advanced manufacturing, if you look at nowadays job which are service oriented or which are very much digital, then why would you separate living from working that uh, distantly? So that is another aspect of what we are doing. And we are looking at a 170 kilometers linear development of a hyper-connected, all enabled city that is powered by 100% clean energy. 100% renewable energy, 170 kilometers, 20 minutes to travel from one end to the other hand, which means wherever you live in the city, you do have that direct connection to nature within five minutes walking distance, but you also have the connection to any other part, whether it's the football stadium, the opera, the beach or the mountains, all of that is reachable. And within the five minutes from your place where you live, you have access to 95% of NEOM that is covered with untouched nature. That is ne NEOM in the center and close to a lot of other people living around us. And uh, I would like to close off with that because that very much links back to all that we are doing and what NEOM is about. And I'm very proud to be heading up energy and water as one of the uh, key pillar and basic enablers of building this beautiful dream of the future. But the dream we are doing, and if we can dream it, we can do it. Thank you very much.